Right off the bat, I want to tell you all about an opportunity this coming Saturday, June 24th of 2023, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going to be doing a live tutorial about how to use Microsoft 3D Builder. I do mention this later on in the video, but thought I would put this at the very beginning in case you wanted to be able to jump in on that. This is going to be on my Patreon Discord channel so that I'm able to interact directly with you and that you can share your screen as well if you need tutoring on specific modifications that you want to make, not only with these dungeon blocks but any other stl files i think microsoft 3d builder is a fantastic and very easy way to modify files i did produce a video if you want to skip and do that instead so click up here but if you want some group tutoring on how to use it and specifically we're going to be using these dungeon blocks and i'm going to be showing you how i made my mods you do have to be a Patreon supporter, but it only takes a dollar. So sign up as well. Pick up these blocks if you want or any other SDL files that you want to modify and download Microsoft 3D Builder, which is free. I will be recording this session and making that video available to my Patreon supporters. So if it's after June 24th, you will still be able to access it as long as you become a Patreon supporter. So thank you so much and let's go ahead with this video. In today's video, I show you dungeon blocks crowdfunder campaign. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of June of 2023, we have two $25 credits going towards LV427. They create sci-fi terrain that is really unique. Go ahead and use the links below to go to their page to be able to order. Also use my code to get 20% off of your order. Two Zectonium Prison Mine pledges for their Kickstarter. Two Bleak Elf Bastion pledges for that Kickstarter. Two Black Coast Citadel pledges for that Kickstarter. Two Frost City pledges. I've done a video for all of these campaigns, so make sure to check out my video playlist in order to see more details about them. Also, we have a Gwaik 10 watt diode laser. If I can actually get that working, I'm having a little bit of trouble, but that might be also one of the gratitude gifts. And then finally, $100 going towards a crowdfunding campaign, which my Patreon supporters are voting upon. It's either going to be Stalker or the reprint of Tenaris Adventures. Use the link below to go to my Patreon page to find out more information. It only takes a dollar to be given the chance of possibly being chosen by Bob to receive one of these gratitude gifts at the end of this month. So Dungeon Blocks is currently a crowdfunder on My Mini Factory Frontiers. Go ahead and use the link below to go to that page where you can find out more information. That campaign will have about one more week by the time I post this video. So go ahead and make sure to jump on that if you are interested. Although I do think that the files are going to be made available after the campaign, but I'm not 100% sure and it will likely be at a higher cost. So if you're interested, go ahead and jump in on that campaign. Now, one of the unique things about this campaign as well is that you receive the files right away. There is no sort of end of campaign. In order to gain access to the files, they provide a link where you can download all of these. They did not provide these files for free. I went ahead and purchased them because one of my Patreon supporters told me about this campaign and thought I might be interested. And sure enough, I was interested to print out all of these files that you see here. Now, a word of warning before I move on, there are a number of models that you will see on the board that are custom made or that I adjusted that isn't available. And I'm gonna have a list of those custom made pieces towards the end. Use the timestamps below if you're interested in skipping around to a specific topic, but I do go through all of the pieces that I did modify. So keeping that in mind, I do think that they have provided a large variety of different kinds of blocks where you can build out any dungeon that you would like. No clips, no magnets are required because this system uses a grid where you are placing each one of the squares or blocks into that grid. So it just slots in super easy. You don't have to mess with any of the clips or anything like that. And the grid is pretty much what holds it together. And you can print out various sizes of grids. 
so that it doesn't have to be all connected together as you see here and you can create different levels which is something that I really like about this system. As you can see, there's a lot of risers and different levels that you can have. So I created a lot of variability with how tall things are and with a lot of stairs and bridges that are here on the board, which I think is fantastic. They also did provide these water tiles too, which I like a lot. Now I did experiment a little bit to see whether or not I wanted to increase the size of these tiles and maybe print it at 120 or 125% of original size because I was worried that some of these figures with the 32 millimeter bases, as you see from my Cursed City miniatures that are on the board. But in actuality, each one of the squares is actually 35 millimeters by 35 millimeters, or in English, it is one and three eighths by one and three eighths, which is plenty of space to be able to accommodate that 32 millimeter base. Now against the walls, you're gonna lose some space because of the wall, but I found that uh, you still have an inch of space on the edges where the wall is at. So at the end of the day, I decided not to increase the size, but kept it at stock size because for the most part, as you can see here, even the oversized bases from Kerr City actually sits on these tiles pretty well, even if some of the larger ones spill over. I did print everything at 0.2 millimeter height, which I think is the right amount of detail, but still not being so slow that you're printing for hours and everything printed without supports. Now he does provide a supported version if you want to print these out in resin. A number of other backers are printing their dungeon set out of resin, which is good for them because obviously the detail is fantastic. But for me, really, for terrain, I don't really print things out in resin. I only print out miniatures. So for the most part, I'm happy with using my FDM printer for all of these different files. And I think the amount of resolution and point two is plenty good. Now, having said that, he does provide quite a bit of furniture. For example, some beds or uh, some chests, uh, tables. I didn't opt to print those out because I have plenty of dungeon furniture that I already did print out in resin that I can just plop down and place where I need to so that it isn't pre-cemented onto a tile. But you might want to print some of those specific ones in resin if you have that option just to have the graded detail for the furniture. Now I did attempt to print out the furniture sort of sideways because the Z axis is actually the most detailed in terms of the way that it prints. But the side that had the supports got was so scraggly and messed up that I decided to abandon that and just um, will put the furniture that I already have. But that might be one of the options that you might want to consider. These water tiles, I definitely did print them sideways because the original way when you print them flat, you get a bunch of contour lines, which, you know, at the end of the day, it isn't that bad, but I really wanted the waviness. And so I did set these on edge but it kept falling off the build plate because the edge was so thin, it wasn't gripping well enough onto my build plate. So I did modify these to be thicker so that there was more of an attachment as well using a brim. And I think even though it takes a lot more time, it is worth the effort for me so that I can have a better surface for this water. This is in blue clear PLA and I love the way that it prints. It sort of gets this iridescent look to it. So just adds to that illusion that it is water. I do paint everything with just craft paint. Uh, I don't use miniature paint on terrain just because it's so expensive. And I found that craft paint works super well. I don't even bother putting on a protective coat, uh, but I'm able to just throw these into a box without really worrying about it chipping or the paint coming off. I do print everything in black. I just exclusively use, except for some of the clear ones, I exclusively use black PLA because if there is a ding or a scratch of the paint, it really isn't noticeable. Another thing that I really like about this, and I think it's ingenious, is that these doors, when you open them, all you have to do is pull them out and turn them sideways like this. And that just shows that the door is open. So even though it isn't mechanically being able to open or close, um, this is a sort of elegant way where you can denote that the door is open. Also, you are able to remove walls while you're in game and you're able to plop in uh, some of the traps as 
the adventures our players are going throughout the dungeon, which again is a really cool feature. Also, if you wanted to pre-build a room, you can customize the grid to be whatever size that you want and then just bring it onto the board. And I will talk later about how to customize some of these pieces. Now, the big question that you might have is, can this system recreate the HeroQuest board? If you haven't seen my comparison of different 3D printable dungeon sets, go ahead and click here, where I talk about the wall problem with many of the 3D printable dungeon sets, where because the wall takes up so much space, you have a wasted tile, and that makes it almost impossible to recreate the HeroQuest board without needing to add additional squares where there aren't any. But sure enough, with this system, you can recreate exactly the HeroQuest board. And here's a sample of it here where I sort of took a piece of the HeroQuest board, the uh, main hallway down the middle, and as you can see, it totally is an exact replica of the layout of the HeroQuest board. So this system does pass that test. Now you guys might be asking, why did I print this out when I have an awesome Dragon's Rest terrain set, which is a full one and a half inch tile. So that's slightly larger than these ones here. And to be honest, that still is my favorite set because I am able to readily print out whatever size that I want. And all I have to do is just throw down the walls because the walls are magnetized. So the setup with Dragon's Rest is still faster because I'm able to print out large rooms uh, to be all one piece. Whereas here I have to individually put in the blocks and squares that I need for each room. Now that makes this highly customizable as well as Dragon's Rest, but it's a little bit more difficult to print out for example, a standard four by four room already with walls. I could print that as one piece, but then again, you're unable to um, customize where each of the doors go. So at the end of the day, I still think Dragon's Rest is my favorite system, even above uh, this one. But when I saw this, I definitely said, man, this looks really fun. And I did go ahead and print it out because I think this is gonna be my replacement set for Madara. I made a series of videos where I created a 3D board for Madara. If you want to check those out, just click here. But at that time, I was using high ground where the pieces just sort of clip on top. And the reason why I'm transitioning to this is I actually like this system better than the high ground system. And in fact, I use some of the high ground tiles to make some custom pieces that will work for Madara. And there's something really addictive about creating these blocks. It's the Minecraft of the dungeon building world where you just want to, uh, you, it's just a lot of fun to just be able to place these blocks into this grid to create different height, uh, to have different designs and styles. I don't, I don't know. I, I just can't describe sort of the level of fun that is found in this system. And again, like I said, it's sort of uh, addictive to want to print out more and try out different configurations to modify the files like I did. I just think it is, there's a fun factor to dungeon blocks that is different than some of the other ones. Not only can you use this board for games like Madara, but you can also use them for obviously Cursed City. You can use it for Relic Blade, Catacombs of Corral. You can use it for League of Dungeoneers, Dungeon Universalis, a Massive Darkness with my modified lights. You can recreate the Massive Darkness board where pretty much um, in my previous video where I used Fat Dragon Games tiles in order to play Massive Darkness, you can actually use a 3x3 three three to be a standard room or section in the dungeon that would work really well with Massive Darkness too. So obviously because it's so customizable, because you're able to place every single block, you can make a huge variety of dungeons that will fit almost any system that uses a dungeon. Also, let me share with you how I store everything. This is sort of the haphazard setup that I have where I'm just using a box to have most of my water tiles in here. And then I have all of my um, wall tiles here, as well as my floor tiles that are here. And just throw them all together. Don't worry about them getting 
paint scratched up or anything. Uh, here I have another level with all of my braziers and torches that are on one side. I'm printing up more tiles that I'll slot in here. Here are my extra bases. And then this is all full of different size bases as well as these blocks. Underneath that is this holding all of the different levels that I can have um, and some of the toppers for the columns. And then heading over here is all of the tiles that I didn't want to throw into a box starting off with this whole tray that is just doors. And I have the standard doors that come with the set and then my modified doors here. And I don't put anything in the four corners because they are tiered with these columns and these special toppers that I made so that it can hold the base tray. That way I can stack them. This is all of my stairs as well as my stair toppers so that miniatures can actually stand on the stairs. And then I have all of my taller columns here. I have my prison altar and the skull columns. Lift that up to have all of the specialty wall pieces that are all here on this bottom. And then move over here. I have these tiles that are the inside corners, the custom ones that I made, and then the shorter walls. This is where I have my bridge and then all of these stackable pieces. And then this is just sort of random. I have uh, more columns and then more of the textured uh, specialty floor pieces here. This is where I have the alternative flooring and then the water pieces with the flotsam that is inside the water. And then these are all corner pieces. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, a lot of these pieces are customized by me. I use Microsoft 3D Builder, a free program that you can download from Microsoft. Super easy to be able to modify any of these files. Please don't ask me to share those files with you as the producers of Dungeon Blocks obviously didn't want me to share those out. But this coming Saturday, June 24th, I am going to do a live video tutorial for those of you who are interested in knowing how to use Microsoft 3D Builder in order to modify your own STL files. Again, it's going to be this Saturday, June 24th, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. But you do have to be a Patreon supporter and you do have to have a Discord account that is linked to my Patreon page. Again, it only takes a dollar to become a patron for Gaming Geek and that will give you access to the Discord channel because that's where I will be live streaming. If you have any problems creating that Discord account, go ahead and just make a comment in the comment section below and I can follow up with you. I did offer all of my modified files to the people who did create dungeon blocks because that way they can just um, add it to their folder and make it widely available for the rest of you because I know that many of the pieces would be helpful or many of you are asking for those specific pieces or mods. But they decided to go against that even though I think it, that's not the greatest business decision. I so much appreciate Ian from Dragon's Rest who created a community folder for those of us who made modifications to his files to just drop them in. And because people still need to be a Patreon supporter of his in order to access those files, um, he still is making money because we make no money from these mods anyway. But uh, producers of Dungeon Blocks decided not to do that, so that's their prerogative. And I want to respect that decision, and so I'm not going to be giving away these files for you. But again, there's that saying, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man how to fish, uh, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to teach you how to fish, or in this case, I'm going to teach you how to make your own modifications so that you can adjust and create any files that you need and many of the files that you see here. So here is the list of the modifications that I personally made up to this point. I'll probably be making a lot more. But I went ahead and made different grid sizes for both the base as well as the level risers, the stock ones that 
came with this set is a 3x3 three three, and then I think a 3x6, which is fairly limiting. I know people would prefer sort of an even number, a 2x2 two two or 4x4. Four four. So I went ahead and created the sizes I needed. Predominantly with Madara, they are in 6x6 six six sections. So that's the primary one that I use, although I did make a couple of other ones so that I could use it as hallways or junctions. The second thing that I made right away was this key to have a lip because the base key that you use to hold down risers on top of the grid, they fall out when you pick them up. And so I wanted these keys to remain in the grid so that when I picked up these pieces, they would remain there rather than falling out. So it was a simple thing of just adding this little lip on the edge of the key so that it wouldn't fall through the grid. I moved the prison door for the prison that was originally on a stone tile ground and I moved it to be the same dirt ground as the rest of the prison. I'm not 100% sure why they chose to put it on a different base than all the other uh, walls or cage for the prison, but um, that was really an easy thing to do. I mirrored the bridge so that it was twice as long and then I also put in alternative keyholes at the bottom so that I could use the columns instead of using the blocks in order to support the bridge. I created this platform that I can place on the stairs. One of the things that sort of drives me crazy is that many of the times in these 3D printable dungeons, you can't actually sit a miniature on a stair without it falling over. So I just use this platform to be able to place miniatures onto the stairs and that works out super well because you can just move them up and down according to where the miniature stops their movement. I created this inside corner because there's a number of circumstances where you're putting two walls right up against each other to create an inside corner and you have a gap. I took the regular column that's shown here and then cut it so that it is shorter and I also created an adapter so that all of the columns can hold the ground risers. And that's mostly for a storage solution. I did shrink down and attach the Dragon's Rest hinge doors. As much as I think the regular system that comes with this set is really elegant where you just turn it sideways, I do really like the hinge doors. So I just poured it over the Dragon's Rest doors and I stuck them onto these tiles. This rubble tile I created using high ground, like I mentioned before, I used for Madara, and I just transported over the tile on top of the block base that is here. So pretty much, if you know how to do that, you can use any 3D STL tile. You can attach it onto the dungeon blocks set, the base set, and use any uh, current ones that you have. I have hundreds of different kinds of tile sets, so it is great that I'm able to port that over and create custom textures and tiles and floors. And if you're a Dragon's Rest backer, you know that Ian created all of the different kinds of tiles that you use in Hero Quest. So he just is providing like about two dozen different textures and tiles that you're able to slice and put onto these blocks. And then finally, my most favorite modification are these braziers where the original just had a mound of coal at the very bottom. Instead, I drilled out a hole that enables me to use these balloon lights, these LED balloon lights that are really cheap. And I made a whole video talking about using balloon lights for lighting up as well as all of the different kinds of terrain that's out there that can accommodate that. But I have been, I have switched from using tea lights and sort of jerry-rigging and wiring tea lights to using balloon lights, which is so much easier to use, really simple and very cheap. If you're interested in grabbing balloon lights, go ahead and use my Amazon link in the description below and pick those up. And definitely you want to get the warm light color or the yellow color, not the bright white, because that is too uh, cool, cold of a color and it doesn't look like a flame if you use that bulb. I'm sure I'm going to make a bunch of other modifications and I might have even forgotten some, uh, failed to mention. But again, if you are interested 
in learning how to make these modifications yourself because it is super easy. Again, this coming Saturday, I will be doing a live session through my Patreon Discord channel. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Make sure you have already accessed these files as well as any other files that you want to port over. If you're a Dragon's Rest Patreon supporter, go ahead and make sure that you grab some of the doors from them because I'll be showing you um, all of the different ways to modify the files like I did. And even if you're not interested in dungeon blocks and you just wanted to learn how to mod STL files really easily, uh, feel free to jump on then too. The creators of dungeon blocks, they have plans to create future blocks, a sewer set, also a graveyard set, which I'm looking forward to having some outdoor tiles because those are things that I need for Madara. But if they end up not producing those, again, I'm able to transport over uh, from other sets and create those outdoor tiles too. I think they are also planning on coming out with a sci-fi set. So this is their first set that they have created and I'm looking forward to seeing what other future blocks that they're gonna make. In the meantime, I'm gonna be modifying a lot of the files too, just because it's so fun to be able to create all of these little blocks and fun to put them together. Please hit the like button and subscribe as I am going to continue to come out with different videos of different kinds of STL sets and dungeons and sci-fi terrain. Again, use the link to go to my Patreon page, not only to sign up for this Saturday session, but also to be given the chance of receiving one of the gratitude gifts at the end of this month. Happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.